Peter Buswell for DrVOIP.com, your source for remote technical support. Anything in VoIP, Cisco, Shortel, anything in the cloud, AWS, Google, Microsoft, and of course uh, anything we can help with in your computer network, give us a call, we'll sort it out. The uh, purpose of this particular video is to explore the option of deploying Shortel. You know, while we're at it, it could be Cisco, uh, but we're going to focus on a Shortel deployment here in which we're going to bring a Shortel uh, solution up in an AWS cloud. Now, the target audience for this, this is not uh, a tutorial on Shortel. It's not a tutorial on networks. Neither is it a tutorial on AWS. We have other videos in each of these categories, but the target audience here is someone who uh, just wants to explore how to go about deploying a virtual Shortel in a AWS virtual private cloud. So the assumption is you know something about these uh, particular areas. Um, we'll go in depth about the deployment, but we, we're not going to talk to you too much about um, how to set up AWS. So building out a Shortel in a virtual private cloud uh, is an option. It's, um, you know, folks today are talking about uh, the cloud. A lot of folks we work with uh, want to move their headquarters server into a data center uh, for reasons that one could generally uh, summarize as business continuity and the belief that the data center is a little more secure than perhaps uh, your current uh, office location. That's all uh, possible. That's all true. And the other side of the coin is why build a data center when Amazon has already done such a great job? You can spin up a, a virtual private cloud at AWS in probably uh, less time than you would imagine. If you've got a book buying account, you can just go to AWS.com with your normal Amazon credentials, log in, and you can uh, launch a Windows server server, Linux server, pretty much anything you want and have it up and running in no time. And then you have the ability to uh, create a virtual private network, create your own subnets in the cloud, uh, and then connect them through a uh, AWS gateway to a uh, VPN, uh, let's say a firewall, um, Cisco firewall, Juniper firewall, whatever you've got at the site, Sonic wall, you can set up a VPN concentrator um, and create that uh, VPN tunnel back to the AWS cloud. So it's possible to bring up the Windows server in the cloud, and it's also possible to bring up virtual switches. Uh, typically, uh, in this first um, uh, demo, we're going to bring up a Shortel headquarters server uh, and an ECC server in the AWS cloud. We're going to connect it over a VPN back uh, to uh, the local office site where we'll have shore gear switches and phones. Uh, but it is very possible to put virtual switches in the cloud and also deploy SIP trunks in the cloud, run them back over your VPN. So these are all options. Uh, the AWS environment's pretty exciting. They sell infrastructure. So you have a shared responsibility, shared security module, um, model in which you create your own uh, virtual private cloud. And in that cloud, you're going to create some subnets. Um, and you can spread these subnets out across what uh, Amazon calls uh, availability zones. And it is very possible, for example, to create even an application like Shortel that has a static IP address on the headquarters server. You can actually uh, deploy a couple of headquarters servers, one in each availability zone, uh, set up an elastic load balancer uh, with a public IP address, make that the IP address of your uh, Shortel server, um, and uh, should uh, 
your headquarters server go down, uh, it can fail over to a, a clone copy effectively. So there are all types of options here. Um, we're going to look initially at having a VPC in the cloud. We'll install our headquarters server there and uh, we will bring it back to through a uh, Amazon-based private virtual gateway. Uh, in our case, we're coming to a Cisco ASA at the office site, and at that site, uh, we're going to install some shore gear switches and, and bring up our phones. And we'll do this uh, with the latest and greatest. We'll use Shoreware Connect to do that. Um, you could have multiple VPNs. Um, going to multiple locations, uh, all with your shore gear switches at the endpoint. So uh, in this uh, deployment, you would be protecting the headquarters server and contact center by deploying it in the cloud. Uh, but your local PSTN connections and telephones would be at the remote location, linking back to the headquarters server over the cloud. A uh, very common deployment. Uh, I don't know how many times we've implemented this for clients who are looking to assure survivability of that headquarters server, but um, why not uh, build it in the cloud, your own cloud? Um, don't depend on someone else's uh, deployment and don't de depend on someone else's uh, data center. Bring it up in Amazon. And as I said before, you have the ability to uh, bring up short tell virtual switches. Now, there's a trick to this. I mean, it's, it, you know, it, when you're uh, configuring the Shure Gear virtual switches, um, there's an installation program that you're going to run. You're not going to be able to run that in the cloud. So the secret there is to run it locally and then create it as a VMware uh, machine and then you can move that machine uh, into the cloud so uh, you know basically we'll create a, a subnet here uh, other subnets uh, in different availability zones they can all talk to each other perhaps we'll put uh, a short hole, uh, switch some uh, edge gateways trunk switch virtual in gate so we can bring our SIP trunks right in there as well and perhaps in another availability zone we'll install a DVM um, and more trunks and uh, you can do the entire deployment that way. In this first example uh, we're going to show you the Shure gear switch at the customer location so out here will be Shure gear switches and phones linked over at VPN through the virtual private gateway into the Amazon cloud where our headquarters and ECC uh, servers will be connected. So uh, um, let's log into AWS and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, we have logged into Amazon Web Services uh, where we are in our account. We happen to have uh, established this VPC in the Oregon um, region. There are many regions uh, throughout the world where you could have established uh, your deployment. Uh, each of these regions has availability zones, which are, are just other physical locations within this region. So we're currently in the Oregon region. We could have picked U.S. West, U.S. East, even a European location. When we come into the Amazon console, we're faced uh, with this uh, layout of features, uh, services. We are making use of EC2, uh, Elastic Computing 2. We're making use of some storage content and uh, we are making use down here of a virtual private cloud. We're also using Route 53 uh, for some DNS services. Uh, we're making use of CloudWatch to get some uh, metrics and uh, alerts uh, sent to us there. Are just a number of different tools that you would expect to find in a data center, but in this uh, example 
uh, we're mostly going to use EC2 incidents, ins <laughs> instances. Um, so when we go to our EC2, you'll see that we have three instances running. Um, launching an instance is pretty simple, guys. Uh, basically, hit launch instance. It's going to ask you to to pick out uh, the kind of a machine that you want. In the case of uh, Windows, uh, you can scroll through here and find yourself, uh, for example, ah, come on, a Windows 2000. Um, 2003, we don't want that because it's no longer supported uh, for Shortel Connect. But you'll find uh, 2008 Release 2 with SQL, without SQL. Just go ahead and select the uh, machine, uh, Windows 2008 R2. Uh, even if you're just experimenting, this qualifies for the free tier. It'll work just great. Go ahead and select it. It's going to ask you to pick uh, the kind of storage you want, and you're going to hit the uh, review and launch. And uh, as I said, this is not a tutorial on Amazon, uh, but it's very simple. Uh, it will take you more time to log into Amazon than it will be to create your um, EC2 instance to download and install uh, your Shortel software. So what we've got here is three instances. I'm going to click on that. And it's now going to bring me to a page that shows the details of my ins instances. And uh, here's my headquarters server. Uh, it's running in US West 2A. And um, you can see my public DNS record here. Uh, currently has a, a, a public IP address. Um, I've got this nailed down, so don't even waste your time going there. Uh, through the various, uh, when you set up an instance, you get uh, basically a security group, it's kind of a firewall, and I can say I want to open uh, the uh, port uh, RDP or SSH, and I only want it accessible from my particular IP address rather than the whole world. So it's very possible to nail. Uh, down and uh, create uh, your security policies. This guy here is a Windows 2012 machine, as is this one. I've got one running my uh, uh, Shortel server, and I've got the other one running uh, DVM software, and I have ECC2 installed on it. ECC also, I mean, and this is uh, Shortel Connect. It's the latest and greatest. Um, so w if we were to highlight this guy here, uh, there's some facts that we have down here. You can see that um, uh, my private IP address for this server is 172.31.32.51. Okay, so I am at my remote location. Uh, I have two options here. I can either get to it through a public IP address and just to show you it's up and working I'll copy that and we'll go here put in the public IP address and uh, the default uh, page will be the Shortel Connect client install so you can see that we're reaching the server the server is up the service is operational uh, now if I go to the private IP address um, that we got here when the system launched. Now I, I picked the particular VPC that I wanted to launch this in. And I have, as I said, three subnets available to me. And I picked the subnet I wanted to put this in. And so uh, this IP address, and if we bring that up in our browser, uh, we'll get the login page. Oops, I'm not Dr. Voip, I'm Gandalf uh, de Grey. This is uh, Shortel Connect. If you have not seen this, um, uh, it has an interface that's very um, similar to the uh, diagnostic console that's in version 14.2. Um, it's a little bit of layout. 
I have another video series on uh, Shortel Connect, how to configure it, how to install it. So I'm not going to waste time on that now. This is not a tutorial on Connect. It's a tutorial on putting Connect in your own private cloud. So um, here's the dashboard. And what we have done here is to configure the headquarters server here. If we go back to the management console here, click on the other uh, server, we'll see that it has a private IP address of 131.39.21. And by the way, just so you know, uh, not playing games here. Let's uh, come on, go back. <laughs> IP config. You'll see that. Uh, we are on a private IP address 172.16.179. So we've got a VPN tunnel from the office here up to the AWS cloud. We're on the 172.16 subnet, and our short tail deployment is up there in the 172.31 deployment. Um, and let's go ahead and copy this guy just so you can see this. And we'll go over here. Boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. And he's a contact center director. So you can see uh, that this guy, so we have contact center. Is uh, up and running here in the AWS cloud. Uh, he's talking to our uh, Shortel. This is Connect. It does not look uh, terribly different from 14.2. Uh, uh, again, we're in the cloud here. We're in the cloud here. Uh, if we go to System, Appliances and services, platform equipment. Um, we currently have a Shore Gear 50 installed at 172.16.1. So this guy is across the VPN, and these guys here are in the AWS cloud. Uh, you'll find that uh, we also have a telephone. The telephone is up and running. And it, too, uh, is at the remote site. Uh, of course, he's talking to the shore gear switch at the site. So I <clears throat> guess it's not real exciting to look at, but it's real exciting to think about. You've got uh, your EC2 instances running here in the cloud, communicating back to your office. In your office, you've got your phones, and you've got uh, your shore gear switches uh, set up. So that's pretty much what I want to show you here. Uh, in, a, in the next video, uh, we'll show you how to bring up virtual switches in the AWS cloud. So I hope you have found this informative, and uh, I thank you for viewing.